UFC 261 coming up this Saturday. We have a rematch between Jorge Masvidal and Kamaru Usman. And with KSW 60, we have the rematch that you didn't know you needed. We have Phil DeFries defending his heavyweight belt against the man himself, the light heavyweight champ, Tomas Narkun and Matt. In their first fight, it wasn't overly close, so I'm kind of surprised that we're getting this fight. In the second round, I mean, Phil DeFries had to do the copper tone girl type thing with the dog biting at her swim trunks because, yeah, Narcoon went to grab for something. He got full extension ass cheek, and we continued on. But really, for me, it was how good Phil DeFries' striking looked early on. Like, he had Narcoon dropped in the first round, rocked him in the second round. Like, his grappling was overwhelming. And that's the thing that we've seen from Phil DeFries. If you're just the casual observer of the career of Sunderland's own, and listen, I've got a Crystal Palace jersey on today, so we won't talk too much about Sunderland, but when I look at Phil DeFries from his early days in the UFC, and we even learned a little bit from when we had him on the show years ago, it was the fact that he really had to overcome, you know, the mental demons to get into the cage. He had bad anxiety. He had a hard time making it. The Miocic fight is a staple for him in a bad way. And since he left the UFC, pretty tidy little run that he's been on. He hasn't lost since 2017. And if you look at that fight, he lost to the Ural Hulk, Ivan Shkrikov. You know, the guy that the UFC wouldn't take because he was taking too much juice. So I think the needle melted when they tried to test him. <laughs> you're going to lose a fight like that, but he is on a tidy little win streak. I'll talk about the opponents later on. But it is an interesting fight because, again, if you barely watch KSW, these guys are must-see TV for KSW fans. Phil DeFries is basically the steep Miocic of KSW at this point. Like, if you look at the run that he's been able to go on, especially as of late and after he was in the UFC, he's just so much more technical than most of the guys he's in the cage with. And the great thing about DeFries is that you know his wrestling and his cardio were always great. Those are two things you could never really question. But the fact that his striking really has come to fruition and really improved to the point where he isn't just known as that wrestler grappler kind. He can go out there and get it done with his hands too. And that's really the neat thing about DeFries and his evolution. We see a lot of guys who they have their career and then they go into the UFC after they hit it big. Well, with Phil DeFries, he kind of needed to have his career in the opposite way. He needed to get the UFC almost out of the way for him to really become the MMA fighter he is today. And I'm not going to sit here and say Phil DeFries could beat Francis Ngannou or he could beat Jarzinho Rosenstrike and Cyril Gaunt, but that's not the case. He's gone over and just dominated KSW, and the fact that he has consistently gotten better fight in and fight out, which is something we rarely do see from champions. Normally, it's you get to become the champ, and then you fight in somewhat more of a safe manner. Well, with Phil DeFries, he's finishing more fights now that he is the champ. And with Tomas Narkoon, this will be an interesting fight, but I do agree with you. Their first fight was so one-sided that I am kind of surprised that they are putting it back together, because we did see the improvements from Phil DeFries, not only his striking, but just his speed on the feet in total. He looked to be the much faster guy, which you would not really suspect the heavy in there with the light heavyweight moving up. And for Narcoon, it is kind of weird because speed is something he struggles with. Even go back to the Mamed Kaladov fight. I went back and rewatched his first and second fight with him. He gets dropped by Kaladov in both those fights, mainly because Kaladov is so much faster than Narcoon. And where Narcoon gets his bread buttered, he is so good on the ground in his top position. He's got great submissions. But the problem when you're fighting a guy like Phil DeFries, who physically can just match you, he is the bigger guy, but he's also the faster and I'd argue more technical guy. It's just, it's going to be hard to find an area of this fight where Tomas Narcoon can have a a lot of success. I mean, Narcoon, you talk about it, the guy's 18 and 3 in his relatively young career. I mean, the guy's 31. You look at the wins, uh, the last two, Ivan Erslan, he beat him at KSW 56 back in November. Before that, Prezemislav Misiala, a guy that was over on, what was he, Ultimate Fighter, like a very, very long time ago, a name that I had to memorize before I was talking about, well, really any of Narcoon's fight. And then the DeFreeze fight. Before that, the two fights against Kaladov, uh, Marcin Vocic, and then, yeah, Sokaju back in 2016. Narcoon hasn't been the most active guy. Like, 2018, 2019, 2020, yes. But before that, not as much. You look at some of the losses. Vyacheslav Vasilevsky, stuff like that's going to happen. Gorn Rechik, uh, that was back KSW 29, 2014. So the only loss, again, decision to DeFreeze, decision before that. And he did, uh, you know, get finished back, what? 10 years ago now so it has been a while and that was a young narcoon you look at the overall body of work 14 of his wins by submission for phil defreeze same thing submission artist out of all of his wins 12 of 19 by submission he's on a seven fight win streak since 2017 and the thing that i like about it yeah maybe some of the names aren't the best like anton viazijan that's a good win that was a guy that i thought would become like that next coming out of m1 Go and watch him fight Sergei Haritanov in a fight that he lost. But Vizijin seemed to be one of those guys. And then he beats Colossus with Bellator. 
Listen, you're beating James Thompson in 2017. It doesn't mean a lot. Andrazic was a really big win in 2018 coming into KSW and beating a KSW guy. Finishing Carol Baydorf, you got to realize, Carol Baydorf at one point was at like the height of his powers. This was the guy, and he submitted him. That's great. Beats Narcoon. Beats Luis Enrique, the guy that was in the UFC by split. He was on the wrong end of a split decision, what, like last weekend, Enrique, in the, in the lower levels. And then he beat Michael Kita in a fight that probably shouldn't have happened because Kita was, what, like 40 years old? Yeah, it was And that wasn't that long ago. That was back in December, but not a lot of miles on the clock for DeFreeze in that one. So we have this fight where both guys, I wouldn't say similar styles, but the thing that I like, they both come from really good gyms. For Narcoon, it's BT Gym or Berserker's team. I looked up some of the names. Matrila is one of the guys. Bedorf has trained there in the past. They have a huge team of big guys that he trains with in Poland. For Phil DeFries, he trains out of a few different gyms. And I mentioned the Sunderland connection before. I mean, Team Fish Tank, they have it on Tapology. I've seen it on other sites too. But then you dig into it. So that's TFT MMA. Lukasz Porobiec, who also has trained before at uh, Berserker Team, has trained with Phil DeFries. I find that kind of weird. But another guy that I've seen him train with at Team Cowbond, Tom Aspinall. And that was even in the last couple of weeks. And he's gone to Liverpool and he's trained with the guys at Team Cowbond. So whether that's Aspinall, his dad, the jiu-jitsu coach, whether that's Darren Till, whether that's, well, little Mike Grundy wouldn't, he just wouldn't. But Probably overall, not. Phil DeFreeze putting in the work to advance his overall body of work. I absolutely love that. No, I couldn't agree more. And that's why I do favor him so heavily over Narcoon in this rematch. Because you look at how good he looked in the first fight. And I do believe DeFries has gotten better since that first fight. Whereas Narcoon, I do think he has improved somewhat. But the thing he's going to have to improve in is the wrestling. And I don't see many situations where Narcoon's the one taking Phil DeFries down. Whereas DeFries, if he wants to beat him up on the feet, I think he's more than uh, technical enough to do that. I think he's the faster of the two. And he's a much better wrestler to top it all off. So I do like Phil DeFries in this rematch. Phil DeFries, there's only two sites that have the odds on it open to minus 133 is a minus 168 right now for narcoon he opened up a minus 105 he's a plus 133 and over on topology 248 total votes there's not a lot but they will get there before saturday 82 percent to freeze 68 percent by decision for the 18 percent that i have narcoon 75 percent by knockout yeah i like phil to freeze i know he's the older fighter but the thing is he's well conditioned for the division the other thing that I didn't like out of Narcoon, and maybe it was because he got rocked, but in the second round of their last fight, he kind of looked labored. He had his hands down, like he was breathing out of his mouth. It didn't look all that good. This is a guy that even at 205, you look at it and you read through the comments, he's not the biggest light heavyweight either. That's what? a weird thing. It really is. And he's okay. tall. But he's not the biggest guy. So we both have Phil DeFreeze. Oh, yeah. Saying. Oh, yeah. We both have Phil DeFreeze. That's yeah, it. I couldn't agree more. That's the pick, Matt. <laughs> really looking forward to KSW 60 coming up this weekend. There's a lot of great fights on that card. I mean, your co-main event, holy smokes, you got Zielkowski taking on Kazieszko. It's a difficult one. You also have Izu Gono, main training partner of Jan Blahovic, the former boxer on this main card. Got a lot of shine on the countdown show, oddly enough, he, and in all the embeddeds. He really did, but it is a great card. I can't wait for it. Saturday, it starts at 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to be tuning into it. We love the oh, yeah. international MMA. Big KSW guys, and listen, in the absence of Bellator this week, Matt, you've got PFL starting back up, KSW 60, and UFC 261. So join in with the Fight Companion question mark kicks on saturday keep it locked in with fight and apex and as we always say let's get into it